Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission increases electricity tariff. President Tinubu signs students' loan scheme into law despite operational challenges. Four dead as windstorm wrecks havoc in Nasarawa, Taraba communities. On the foreign scene, nine dead, hundreds injured in most powerful Taiwan quake in 25 years. Hello again and welcome to the news update on Trust Television. I am Aisha Salihu. Thank you so much for joining us. Another news in full. The Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission has approved the increase of electricity tariff for customers under the Band A classification. At a briefing in Abuja on Wednesday, NERC's Vice Chairman Musliu Osheni said the increase will see customers paying 225 naira for a kilowatt per hour from the current 66 naira. Customers under Band A are those who enjoy 20 hours of electricity supply daily. Osheni said these customers represent 15% of the 12 million electricity customers in the country. He added that the Commission had also downgraded some customers on the Band A to Band B due to non-fulfillment of the required hours of electricity provided by the electricity distribution company. He added that the review will not affect customers on the other bands. The development comes amid Monday's announcement by the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority of an increase in the price of natural gas which is used to generate more than 70% of electricity in Nigeria. Meanwhile, reactions continue to throw the reported planned increase of electricity tariffs by 300%, despite poor performance in the power sector. A former chairman of the Nigeria Electricity Regulatory Commission, Professor Sam Amadi, says the removal of subsidies in the power sector will likely be disastrous. For Nigeria citizenry, the report. The director of Abuja School of Social and Political Thought and the former chairman of the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, Professor Sam Amadi, in the virtual interview on Trust TV's Daybreak Show, identified the counterproductive implications of a tariff hike under the current economic climate, adding that Nigerians may be negatively affected if the gaps in the industry are not adequately addressed. They are not getting the power. They are paying for alternative provision a lot. And now, if you increase tariff, it's not just increasing tariff. It's also the fact that they might still have almost the same level of supply. So they pay high for the mega two hours, three hours, four hours, depending on where they are. Supply also pay for increasing uh, diesel costs, increasing fuel costs. The industry expert also highlighted the viable options available for power sector reforms that would save Nigerians from bearing the brunt of more financial burden. Tariffs don't increase large in the electricity market because it's 20 years, 25 years to amortize their costs. So the investor is patient. He makes an investment. But here, you don't have the product. You have a poor uh, customer base. And you want to square the revenue and the cost immediately. That's a problem. It's not going to work easily because you have inefficiency, you don't have the quantity, uh, people are not ready to pay, they don't even have the power. So what we should have done, if you had strong investment uh, investors who could bite the sword for a period of time, they will improve the network, expand services. Then when power flows, more quantity flows, huge costs go down, and people will be more willing to pay. According to latest reports, power companies will be allowed to raise electricity prices to 200 naira per kilowatt hour from 68 naira for urban consumers in the month. The Bloomberg News Agency citing sources reported on Tuesday. It quoted people in the presidency with knowledge of the matter, saying this was in a bid to attract new investment and slash about $2.3 billion spent to cap tariffs. President Bola Tinubu on Wednesday passed the Student Loans Access to Higher Education Act Repeal and Reenactment Bill 2024 into law. This comes after separate considerations by both 
the Senate and the House of Representatives of the report of the Committee on Tertiary Institutions and TET Fund. One person has been confirmed dead and several others injured following a windstorm that occurred on Tuesday night in the Agbashi community area of the Doma local government area of Nasarawa state. Several houses and public infrastructure were also destroyed, leading to the displacement of thousands of people. While the acting chairman of Agbashi Development Association, Anthony Oshinyeka, confirmed the lone death, the State Commissioner of Humanitarian Affairs, Margaret Elayo, said the level of destruction and number of persons and communities affected were yet to be ascertained, adding that a team from the ministry is assessing the damage. Similar cases have also been reported in about four other local government areas in the state. Similarly, three residents of Takum Town in Taraba State lost their lives following a heavy windstorm that hit the town Tuesday evening. The incident, according to a resident, Mewada Takum, occurred Tuesday evening with several residential, commercial, schools and office buildings destroyed. He said many people trapped inside buildings that collapsed while flying zings injured residents. Residents say assistance from the state government and National Emergency Management Agency is needed to assist those whose buildings were destroyed. Still in Taraba State, the police command says seven suspects have been arrested in connection with the abduction of two students of Federal University, Wukari. The State Police Commissioner, David Loyan Norman, who disclosed this, however, said, investigation is ongoing to ascertain if the arrested persons are involved in the abduction or not. Loyan Norman said the police and other security agents are still in the forest to rescue the abducted students. Meanwhile, the public relations officer of the university, Adore Audu has identified the two students as Joshua Sardona from Economics Department and Obianu Elizabeth Chiwodu from Microbiology Department. She added that the victims are spillover students. Troops of 6th Brigade Nigerian Army say they have neutralized five terrorists foiled kidnapping attempts and recovered a substantial cache of arms and ammunition. The troops, while acting on intelligence reports on plans by the terrorists to kidnap some church members returning from church program in Wakari along Tortsei and Takum Road, neutralized four of the gunmen and recovered two AK-47 rifles, one pump-action rifle and two AK-47 magazines. The troops also neutralized one terrorist at Chachachangi Ward of Takum local government area and recovered one locally fabricated FN pistol, two rounds of 9mm ammunition and one mobile phone belonging to the criminal. The military implored members of the public to continue supporting its troops by providing timely and credible information on any suspicious movement or activities of criminals within the state. Truck drivers conveying goods to Plateau State are raising security concerns over the state traffic law that prevent trucks and other heavy-duty equipment from entering into Boko Just metropolis between 6 a.m. and 9 p.m. The state government announced on March 10, 2024, the signing of Executive Order 003 by Governor Caleb Mutfung, imposing a fine of 500,000 naira on violators of the law. A development that did not sit well with the drivers. Adamusa visited the truck parking site and now reports. Since the implementation of the traffic law, truck drivers are expected to park at Maravan Jamaa until 9 p.m., after which they are allowed to either drive into Bukujos Metropolis or pass through other states. According to the drivers, the designated parking area is neither safe for their lives nor for their trucks describing the area as volatile. Honestly, it is risky for us to be parking here for fear of the unknown. It is a fact that whenever there is crisis in the state, 
it spreads to other parts and parking here is putting our lives in danger because we wouldn't know what will happen. Please, government should do something. We are begging government to reconsider this order. This is a place that something can happen unexpectedly. We are expected to remain here till 9 p.m. without security personnel that can prevent us in case of any problem. This is our cry. We call on the government to look at this law again. To me, parking here is at the same time putting our lives in danger because with the nature of insecurity in this country, it is dangerous to be parking here until 9 p.m. Government should please provide another safe place for us. The driver said they will continue to be law abiding while pleading with the government to provide favorable alternatives to the order. Adomusa, Trust TV News. And to labor matters and to health, resident doctors at the University of Medical Sciences Teaching Hospital in Ondo State have commenced a 14-day warning strike. The doctors, under the auspices of the National Association of Resident Doctors, said the strike was necessitated by the non-payment of seven months salaries to their new members. Speaking to newsmen during the protest, the president of the association, John Matthew, disclosed that the doctors were also protesting the state government's failure to disburse the February hazard allowance despite assurances, as well as shortage of staff resulting from the resignation of doctors from the hospital. He revealed that there were only 26 resident doctors in the hospital as against 150 a few months ago. The deadline set by the Nigerian Communications Commission for linking NINs to SIMS has resulted in over 40 million lines being disconnected. The Subscriber Identity Module National Identification Numbers Linkage Policy, introduced by the Nigerian government in December 2020, mandated all telephone users in Nigeria to link their SIM cards with their NINs. The Nigerian Communications Commission and the National Identity Management Commission are the two key federal government agencies spearheading the process. After the February 28 deadline set by the NCC, telecommunications operators in Nigeria barred approximately 40 million telephone lines that did not have linked NINs. The ongoing challenges faced by Nigerians in the SIMS NIN linkage process include long queues, overwhelmed telecom agents, and technical glitches. An online individual, Ezinwa or DK Mere, who shared his experience of the tedious process of obtaining an NIN, emphasized the recurring network issues faced at enrollment centers. He said inadequate facilities and slow enrollment processes were observed at centers like Mushin local government area. In Lagos State, where only a few officers were handling numerous applicants. This is the news update on Trust Television. Still ahead. After much controversy, business operations picking up for medicine dealers at new location in Kano State. More news when we return. Do stay with us. Welcome back and thank you so much for staying with us. Let's take a look at our top stories again. We told you that Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission increases electricity tariff. President Tinubu signs student loan scheme into law despite operational challenges. And now moving on to more stories. The Minister of Education, Professor Tahir Maman, on Tuesday announced plans by the government to go after individuals with fake university certificates in the country. According to the minister, the individuals will be tracked after the committee set up by the federal government to investigate the activities of university certificate racketeers in the country submits its report. The minister also highlighted some of the developments in the education sector and the commitment of the Tinubu administration to address gaps. Talking about accreditation of certificates, you remember uh, some two, three months ago, the issue about uh, fake certificates flooding the country. 
and the high powered Itabil Senate Committee, which we have set up. That committee is rounding up its work. And from what I heard, from what I was informed, we have major, major breakthroughs about uh, fake certificates for the discount. So, as we promised earlier on, once we get that, uh, get that report, not only will it help the ministry strengthen its recognition and acquisition of certificate, but those who come into the country who patronize uh, fake certificates will have themselves to blame. But we're going to trace them with the security agencies to their employers so that they are all flushed out of the system and in appropriate cases they are investigated. This has become another major area of focus for the country and the ministry is working with the security agencies to ensure safety of our schools. And one of the things that we will be able to develop with the Ministry of Justice is a standard operation procedure for the prosecution of the repression of school-based uh, gender violence. This was done about two months ago. Out of school children, um, the number that have been enrolled so far, about two million in various uh, areas, in basic schools and Arabic literacy programs, vocational training, you can see about two million plus so far. And then the guidelines have been with the uh, uh, training manuals for the implementation of inclusive basic education in Nigeria. All these have led to increased enrollment in our schools at that level. After several years of legal battle, the crisis between patent medicine dealers and relevant regulatory agencies in Kano seems to have been over nearly a month after a federal high court ordered the relocation of the pharmaceutical dealers from Sabongari Market. Trust TV correspondent Idris reports that pharmaceutical business has picked up at the new pharmaceutical market in Dangoro area of Kano State. His report. It is called Kanawa Coordinated Wholesale Center, a modern facility provided for the purpose of sale and distribution of pharmaceutical product as against the controversial open market in Sabongari. The nature of the people is they don't want to relocate. Even if you build a, a new house, from your old house to your new house, it will make you, it, you cannot even go directly to relocate. Maybe it will, it will give you more difficult. To relocate so most of our members they were having shop like what i have said but they refused to come until when the federal government imposed i mean imposed them to come here following a federal high court judgment directing these traders out of sabongari business activities are picking up with hundreds of youth now engaged in different areas traders believe that the new market is given a new vista on wholesale distribution of pharmaceutical products. Ever since we've been operating, we've been operating illegally. That was why we have been having head-on collision with successive governments. But Alhamdulillah now, uh, from 2016 till date, the federal government felt that since the regulation on drugs is an exclusive jurisdiction of the federal government, so they made provision through law that this place is going to be a legal and a permanent place for wholesalers. So that is the most happiest part of it. The facility is designed to monitor the kinds of drugs brought to the market, restrict the influx of illicit drugs to the communities, as well as ensure effectiveness and quality control of the pharmaceutical products across Kano State. As you can see right from outside, provisions for so many things are made. Parking space, uh, you know, conducive place for giving drugs, you know, uh, enough spaces for customers to come and park their cars, you know, conveniences, and uh, what we call the call chain for what we call the tamula bile products, where drugs that are meant to be kept between plus 2 to plus 10 degrees centigrade, they can be safely kept and safely transferred to hospital for a patient to safely be consumed and get healed by Allah's grace. Although traders lament the high cost of shops in this new market, but authorities argued that the shops are designed to preserve pharmaceutical products and that the shop size is not the same with the ones in Sabangari market. Before we pick the price, we consider where they were, they are before. 
because the measurement of this, like uh, when you see this shop is nine, is a 36 square meter, mm. equivalent of four of where they are before. So where they are before is they were paying 400 for nine square meter, 400. When you multiply 400 by four, it's almost 1,600,000. Yeah. But here is 1.2, which means if you divide it by four, it's 300. Per, per nine square meter. Mm. So this one is more cheaper than the place where they are. Traders here say the Kanawa Coordinated Wholesale Center for Pharmaceutical Product has come to stay and they are already making the best use of the new facility. Idris Jibrin, Trust TV News, Kanu. We'll take it away from Nigeria now. At least nine people were killed and more than 800 injured on Wednesday by a powerful earthquake in Taiwan that damaged dozens of buildings and prompted tsunami warnings that extended to Japan and the Philippines before being lifted. Officials said the quake was the strongest to shake the island in decades and warned of more tremors in the days ahead. Director of Taipei's Central Weather Administration says Mology Center Wu Chen Fu said the earthquake is close to land, was felt all over Taiwan and offshore islands. Strict building regulations and widespread public disaster awareness appear to have st stayed off a major catastrophe for the earthquake prone island, which lies near the junction of two tectonic plates. Wu said the quake was the strongest since a 7.6 magnitude struck. In September 1999, killing around 2,400 people in the deadliest natural disaster in the island's history. Wednesday's magnitude 7.4 quake hit just before 8 a.m. local time, with the United States Geological Survey putting the epicenter 18 kilometers south of Taiwan's Hualien City at a depth of 34.8 kilometers. And finally, in sports news, Turkish club Trab Sponzo have been ordered to play six home matches behind closed doors after violent scenes marred a league game with rivals Fenerbahce last month. The country's football federation said Wednesday two Fenerbahce players, Dutch defender Jaden Osterwalde and goalkeeper Irfan Khan Agribayat, were also fined and handed one match bans by the TFF's disciplinary board. Osterwalde has was punished for kicking a trap zone sport fan who had run onto the pitch with his face covered. A group of trap zone sport fans invaded the pitch after the final whistle of the 3-2 home defeat on March 17. The attacks took place at the Fenerbahce players and coaching staff celebrated their victory. Goalkeeper Dominic Livakovic being punched in the face. The Black Sea team must also pay two fines totaling 3.1 million Turkish lira, that is $97,000. Nigerian international Bright Osai Samuel escaped punishment after punching a fan on the pitch. And that concludes the news update at this hour. But remember, you can always follow us across all of our social media platforms and also join our YouTube live stream for my news programs and documentary. I'm Aisha Faliu. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs>